President. Mr. President, Senator Mitch McConnell says he has sent a letter to you explaining his view. Have you seen that letter? Have you communicated with him? And, and how dire do you believe this is if action doesn't take place in the next few days? First of all, I did get a letter. I got it 10 minutes before I walked in here. I've read it. I uh, plan on talking to Mitch about it. He and I have uh, been down this road once before, back when I was vice president. And I hope we can have some intelligent and honest conversation about what he's proposing. And uh, I think the easiest way to do this, and if the Republicans would not use the filibuster, would be to let us vote on what is already in the Senate right now, passed by the House, to raise the debt limit. And we could do that in the next several days. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President, thank you, Mr. President. You've often touted your experience in the Senate, your 36 years in the Senate. Your aides have uh, talked about your abilities to be a closer uh, on deals involving legislation. Why were you unable, Mr. President, to close the deal with members of your own party on key, par key parts of your legislative agenda last week? Thank you. I've been able to close the deal on 99 percent of my party. <laughs> Two. Two people. That's still underway. I don't think there's been a president who's been able to close deals that's been in a position where he has only 50 votes in the Senate and a bare majority in the House. This is a process. This is a process. We'll get it done. It sounds like you're putting the blame squarely on two U.S. senators for your inability to close that deal, Senator Sinema and Senator Manchin. Am I incorrect? Is that who the blame lies with? Look, I need 50 votes in the Senate. I have 48. Uh, Leader Schumer has vowed not to raise the debt ceiling through the reconciliation process. Uh, so ultimately, it puts Say that again, I'm sorry. Leader Schumer has said he won't raise the debt ceiling through the reconciliation process. Process. So ultimately, if push comes to shove and Senator McConnell does not change his position, what is more important, uh, that position that Senator Schumer has or raising the debt ceiling? And then I also have a question for you on Ethiopia. If you want. No, I'm going to answer one. I'm not going to answer Ethiopia. Let's stick on the debt so we don't confuse the American people. Number one, the issue of reconciliation, which is like code to the American people, but what's reconciliation? There is a process that I understand the Republican leader is willing to initiate, go through, that would require literally up to hundreds of votes. It's unlimited number of votes having nothing directly to do with the debt limit. It could be for everything from Ethiopia to anything else that has nothing to do with the debt limit. And it's fraught with all kinds of potential uh, danger for miscalculation. And it ha would have to happen twice. So you could literally have several hundred votes over the next number of days. Everything else would come to a standstill, but you still find yourself in a situation where at the end of the day, you may have passed something that, in fact, then has to be undone again by either Democrats or Republicans. It's an incredibly complicated, cumbersome process when there's a very simple process sitting out there. Sitting at the desk in the United States Senate is a bill passed by the House saying, we Democrats will raise the debt limit, take responsibility for raising, even though we didn't, some voted to acquire the debt as well. We'll, we will go ahead and do that. That's the way to proceed. But if it comes down to reconciliation or raising the debt ceiling, which, which position would you take? I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to cross that bridge so we have to get there. Can you address the allegations of genocide and why you haven't yet imposed those sanctions that you authorized two weeks ago, sir? I'll speak to that later. Regarding your Build Back Better agenda, we know the top line figure from Senator Manchin is $1.5 trillion. Uh, Senator Kirsten Sinema has yet to really give that number of where she's willing to go, how high she's willing to go, but she says she's negotiating good faith with the White House. What is her figure? I'll let her tell you that. I don't want it. We're in negotiations. Between 1.5 and 3.5? Is it higher at least than the 1.5? I'm not going to negotiate in public. Uh, Mr. President. Uh, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, um, how is what the Republicans are doing now 
any different from when you opposed raising the debt limit as a senator during the Bush years? Because we weren't calling for filibuster. We did not require 60 votes, and it was a straight up and down vote. Uh, Mr. President, just watch, Mr. President, uh, you're talking about how you have 48 Democratic votes right now. The other two uh, have been pressured over the weekend by activists. Joe Manchin had people on kayaks show up to his boat. T.L. Adam, Senator Sinema last night was chased into a restroom. Do you think that those tactics are crossing a line? I don't think they're appropriate tactics, but it happens to everybody. From the, <laughs> the only people it doesn't happen to are people who have Secret Service standing around them. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's part of the process. Yes, sir. Really a lot of people have been trying to okay. attack immigration. Uh, Mr. President, you know, I know you don't want to comment on other senators' positions in the negotiations, but what do you think the size of the reconciliation package should be? What specific dollar figure? Well, I laid out what I thought it should be. It's not going to be that. It's going to be less. I mean, look, <laughs> the legislation, both the Build Back Better piece as well as the infrastructure piece, are things that I wrote. These, are, these, these didn't come from, God love him, Bernie Sanders or AOC or anybody else. I wrote them. I disagreed with Medicare for All, for example. I disagreed, but I laid out what I thought would be important. For example, I think on the Build Back Better program, it's required that we, in fact, have the best education available to us. And I'll be speaking to this in detail tomorrow. But look, here's the situation. How can we, in an ever competitive world, increasingly competitive world, how can we not meet the educational standards of at least other countries are working toward. Nobody is reducing the number of years they want their children to go to school or people to go to school. You've heard me say it before, as my wife says, uh, if, if we don't, if any country out educates us, they're going to outcompete us. Look what China's doing. Look what the rest of the world is doing. They're investing. They're also investing in things that relate to ability for people to go to work and stay at work. We have several million women who can't go back to work because they don't have any way to take care of their children. So to give a tax cut to a working mom to be able to afford daycare, is that bad? Is that a bad idea? I think it's a darn good idea. We'll get people back to work. So there's a lot of things in the legislation I'm going to be talking about across the country that I think the American people overwhelmingly support. But the idea that somehow this is somebody else's legislation, this is what I wrote. Sir, would you that a $2 trillion, say a $2 trillion reconciliation bill, would that be acceptable to you? Again, it, as you know, it's not a smart thing to negotiate with yourself in public. Let's see, we're in the process of continuing to talk to all the parties and see what we can get done. Sir, thank you so much, Mr. President. Two questions. First, you said there was progress in the negotiation, but today you said you only have 48 votes. So what is this progress? And another question on the part, an international uh, news that was big yesterday about the Pandora Papers. Do you have any reaction? You could fight against corruption as the well, core of Pandora the Papers? Part. The Pandora Papers? You said that we could fight against corruption in the core of your national uh, national security policy. So, what is your reaction, and do you plan uh, to do anything about it? We're looking at that right now. And the first part of your question was what? Was about progress. What does progress look like for you in the negotiations? Winning. That's the progress. The last question. The Hyde Amendment. Amendment. The Hyde Amendment. The you. I just want to be very clear. Can you guarantee? that the U.S. will not reach the debt ceiling, that that will not happen? No, I can't. That's up to Mitch McConnell. So is it possible that the U.S. will not pay its debt? That is possible. That is possible. I can't believe that that will be the end result, because the consequence is so dire. I don't believe that. But can I guarantee it? If I could, I would, but I can't. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Senator Manchin says the deal is off if 